ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Welcome in to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. For this April 3rd, we're going to get your text in this hour, 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. we got a lot talked about today because it was officially announced. We've known, but this was the official public press conference today to announce Cornelius Jackson as the 30th head coach in Marshall men's basketball history. So we had that earlier today. I hope you get a chance to listen to it in its entirety. But there was time to talk to Coach after the public press conference. So we got that. That's stuff you haven't heard yet. So we'll hear from that. I had a chance to catch up for just a couple minutes with Obina Anacilli Killen, also Nate Martin. Nate expressing to a couple of members of the media that Cornelius Jackson's his guy, recruited him. He's not going anywhere. Obina's not going anywhere, so you don't have to worry about that. But for those of you that maybe tuned in, heard the presser earlier today, what was your initial thought when you heard Coach Jackson talk about his journey and talk about being the next head coach? What did you hear that you liked? And, of course, if you heard something you didn't like, we'll open up the text line for you at 304-396-TALK, 304 396 Eight two five five. So I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you today about this, and we'll hear from Cornelius Jackson in just a few minutes. Coming up a little bit later on the program as well, we've got Sydney Shelton joining us from Marshall's marketing department. She's going to get us caught up on everything that's happening with the Thundering Herd. So I'm looking forward to talking to her. Good event today. She was there as well as everyone. Um, anyone that was anyone. That was at Marshall today for basketball. Could be seen, could be heard from. Fun event today. I'm I'm excited for Cornelius Jackson. He's been a guy that has wanted to be the head coach at Marshall basketball for a long time. He probably has passed up different opportunities so he could be in position to be the head coach once it was available. And so he's starting to live his dream. He's got a lot of support. Some of his former teammates were on hand today. And the players that were there, very supportive of Coach Jackson. And you heard the presser earlier today. You know, he was basically the coach in waiting for the position. So that's the reason why there wasn't a national search for the next head coach. He's got the Marshall connection. That's important to athletic director Christian Spears. That's a big one. You know, do they have a connection to the place? You know, are they there for the student athlete? So there's a lot that probably went into the ultimate decision. Okay, he's our guy. And, of course, he's got a history with the team, the program. He has a background. Some of the things he talked about will go into a little bit further depth today is the style of play. It's going to be similar to what we have seen on the court. So he'll play an up-tempo style, maybe the Dan D'Antoni system with some tweaks. I know defense is going to be big for this team. That's a big word. Defense is going to be key for this team. I think you have to be successful in and around the rim when you don't have the ball. You have to be successful. You have to be able to get stops. You have to be in the right position. You have to be ready to make a play when you don't have the ball. And so I think we're going to see some exciting things coming up from this team. You know, It's day one, so we can be optimistic. We can be upbeat. But we'll get that text line open for you in just a minute. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255 to be a part of today's edition of The Drive here in ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. we got some other news today including Marshall women's basketball, more success on the track for the Thundering Herd. So we'll get into all of that with you. And, of course, we'll talk to Sydney Shelton joining us here in just a few minutes as we get set to completely, completely blow off the, blow off the door today with all of this stuff happening 
with Marshall basketball. So I'll tell you what, I want to get to a lot of this stuff. So we'll take our break early because I've got a lot of things I want to get into. So let's go ahead and do that now so we can have a little bit more time to do that. And we'll get your text starting to line up now. So we'll start getting to those. We'll do all of that when we continue. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We're going to start lining your text up. Text line is open 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. So today was the day for Herd fans in attendance. We got a chance to meet the new head coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd, and we already know who he is. He's his son of Marshall. He's played for Marshall. He's been an assistant coach for Marshall, and now he makes the transition to head coach for the Thundering Herd, and that's Cornelius Jackson. And he's talked about this. He's wanted to be the head coach of the Thundering Herd for a long time. Ever since he was a young man in Towers, I believe he said, he's wanted to be the head coach of the Thundering Herd. And so now the dream has come alive for him. He is the head coach of the Thundering Herd. And he talked about that dream earlier today when we had a chance to catch up with him after the formal presser ended. Here's what he had to say about just now realizing that dream, being the head coach of Marshall basketball. It's a special moment. I, uh, again, I, like I said, I, I, I've had this dream since I was 19 years old, sitting in Twin Towers East. And uh, to have it come to pass is actually a special, special moment. Twin Towers East, to be exact. He's been sitting, waiting to be the head coach since he was 19 years old. And so now he's been the assistant coach. He's been at Marshall, so he doesn't have to go far. He's got to move move his stuff over to a different desk, a different office. It's going to be the same work atmosphere, right? Nothing too much is going to change, except that the whole dynamic is going to change now. He's the head coach. And he talked about that process of transitioning from assistant coach to head coach of the Thundering Herd. It is. It's a, it's a huge challenge. I've, I've been fortunate. Coach gave me a lot of responsibilities as an assistant coach. So uh, him giving me that responsibility kind of re- prepared me for where, where we're going today. Uh, it's a challenge. You know, it's, 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 it's busy. In the last week has been busy. But, again, when you pray for things like this, Keith, and they come, Um, You also pray for preparation, and I've done that, so I feel good about where we're headed. So he feels good. He feels like he's prepared. Dan D'Antoni transitioning him to be the next head coach of the Thundering Herd, so he feels like he's ready to go. And one person that he can lean on and he can count on, and we've talked about this, he might have been an assistant coach under Dan D'Antoni for several years, but if you look back, he's a guy – who has another connection to college basketball, and that's his former coach, Greg White. And I asked him about Coach White. Is he somebody that you can lean on even now? Corny joked that he's been texting him all morning long. I mean, it's like a 52-53 text barrage. And he, he joked about that. He talked about that. But he, he did say that Coach White's somebody that he has talked to, leaned on, and will continue to have support from. Uh, Coach White is huge in my life. Uh, again, that's why you heard the special thanks up there. I can lean on him a ton. I can count on him a ton. Uh, again, today he sent me 52 texts this morning before 8 o'clock, and, and Coach is super excited, and he said he'll do anything he can in his power to help this program, so I'm excited about that. So I'm sure he'll be able to call upon Dan D'Antoni if he's needing to ask a question, some advice. I'm sure that Dan's going to be – a person that he can reach out to. But I think you're going to see a lot more of Coach White maybe being involved with this as well as someone who has experience as a head coach and a former player of his now taking the next step to being a head coach also at Marshall University. And one question that was asked about his journey from player to coach was his journey from somewhere else to Marshall, to being a assistant coach and now a head coach. He didn't start out at Marshall, but he did find his way to Marshall after a time 
at Tennessee, and he talked about why it made sense for him coming from Tennessee to Marshall. You know, I, I left Tennessee. We, we had a coaching change. I decided to come back home. I, I, I had brothers and sisters that went here. Uh, coach White, obviously, I was very familiar with Coach and Coach Snell, and those guys just recruited me. It actually came down to Virginia Tech or Marshall, and I'm, I'm so glad I chose Marshall. So Marshall beat Virginia Tech in the services of Cornelius Jackson, and look where it's got Corny now. He is the head coach of the Thundering Herd. Another person he talked about today giving a lot of credit to, and you sometimes forget that Corny wasn't necessarily the assistant coach at Marshall University just because oh, we like Horney, he's a good guy, let's, let's give him an opportunity. He had to work his way into positions and get that opportunity to be a coach. Anybody can be someone that you look upon fondly after their playing career, like, hey, that's a good guy. And Corny is. But is he a good coach? Well, he got an opportunity. It was given by West Virginia State coach Brian Poor, and Corny talked about that opportunity that really helped get him started. When you talk about an, an opportunity, right? So coach gave me an opportunity. I, it, it wasn't like I wasn't trying to get into coaching. You know, I, I, I had tried for two years. After I finally hung up the shoes and said, I'm done playing, I tried to get into coaching for two years. And coach gave me an opportunity of a lifetime. I was there with him for six years. We won four championships, whether regular season or a tournament. So I owe a bunch to Coach Poor because he took a chance on me. Uh, when nobody else would. So a lot of people making this journey possible for Cornelius Jackson. What did we expect to hear from players today? Positive so far. Haven't heard anything negative, no apprehension. It's all positive. So we'll start with what Cornelius said to the team he was asked about those conversations. What were some of those first conversations with the guys who remained on the roster and wanted to stay at Marshall? Well, it was just about making sure they were okay. You know, I didn't do a whole bunch of talking. I've done a whole bunch of listening. But I, I, I approached each and every one of them and just made sure they were okay. And that's important. He knows these guys, but he wants to make sure that they're okay. He was their assistant coach. Now he's their head coach. So he wants to make sure that his team, they're okay. They're good with the change, that they're on board. They want to stay. They want to be a part of this team. And so he had to make those, those feelers happy. He had to basically go out and say, look, are you guys okay with this? I mean, I'm one of your head coach. I'm not your assistant anymore. I'm not the guy you go to when you, you have problems with coach. I'm coach now. So you might be going to one of the other guys about me. I don't know. But he's the coach now. And so that was some of his first conversations with the team. And that's a great place to transition. First off, Nate Martin had a chance to catch up with Nate after the presser. And I thought – to myself, here's a guy that, you know, he hasn't been here as long as Obina and Achille Killen. So, you know, what's this transition going to be like for him? And I got his initial thoughts, and, you know, come to find out, you might have known this or you might have not, but Cornelius Jackson's a big reason why Nate Martin is here at Marshall University. So Nate talked about his initial thoughts once he found out that coach got the job and he was excited. He was uh, he was traveling when he found out, and he was still excited for the announcement. I'm really excited. You know, Corny, he's, he's a great dude. Uh, he, he recruited a lot of us that are staying here, so we're all very loyal to him. Love him a lot, and I think he's going to – he'll bring a lot of the same stuff Dan did, and he'll bring a lot of energy to him. What were some of the first things he said to you when he found out and talking to the team? Yeah, so he – I actually was flying back in town, landed in Louisville whenever the news broke. So I was in Louisville like 8 p.m., and I start driving over here. He calls me on the phone, and uh, I tell him I'm driving back, so I can't meet right now. But he met with me at like 11:30 p.m. when I got back, and I think that kind of—I mean, it kind of set the tone for the type of guy he is, uh, how much he cares about us. So he kind of just told me uh, his plans and how he wants us to be a big part of it. So, what are those plans? Anything you possibly can share? Um, 
he's going to keep a lot of the same stuff Dan did. I think he's going to bring a lot of energy, a lot of a lot of more upbeat energy to the team too. And uh, yeah, I'm excited though. It's going to be it's going to be a good year. You mentioned defense as well. Going to be a little tweak or two. Uh, how excited are you for that? Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, switching on the guards is tough. I will say. I mean, I've never done that before in my life, but I'm excited. I think the defensive switches will definitely help us. So that's a big thing for this team, and we'll hear more from Cornelius a little bit later on about that. I tried to get, I tried to get him to to really just lay it out for me. I tried twice. I think I got something out of him, but I did try to kind of find out a little bit more about what's going to be different about this team. We know what's going to stay the same. The philosophy is going to be similar, but what's going to be different about this team? And the guy who has seen a lot of what has happened at Marshall University is Obina and Achille Killen, another one of those players that Coach Jackson talked about that he's talked to. They're going to be big in the season. It's got to be, you know, leadership from Obina. It's got to be leadership from Nate. And so we heard from Nate. Obina, he's excited as well. He's a loyal guy. I don't think he was going anywhere. He's a loyal guy. He believed in Dan D'Antoni. He believes in Cornelius Jackson. And I wanted to get his initial thoughts as well when I had a chance to catch up with him earlier. We're thinking, you know, we, I mean, we, we, we trust, you know, we trust in him. You know, he's our head coach now. He's been He's been with me ever since I was at Chapmanville, you know what I mean? Ever since I was been recruited. I think Marshall was my first um, first offer that I got. And, you know, I always have this story that I always tell people about Cornelius Jackson and his dedication. Uh, you know, I remember one time when I was playing AAU and I was having a bad season, uh, a bad game at AAU. Connie was there, you know, sitting down there encouraging me. You know, same thing at Marshall. You know, we not have a bad game, good game. He's down there encouraging me and encouraging the players. So we trust him that, you know, he's going to make the right decision to, uh, you know, take us to the place we want to be. What was his first conversations like when he spoke with you? Oh, no, he was, I mean, first of all, he was super excited. You know what I mean? And, and I, was, I was excited for him, too. You know what I mean? Because, you know, that's a big accomplishment. You know, he wanted to be like this. He, he wanted to be a head coach, but his dream was to be a head because, he, like you said, he's a son of Marshall. If you know, played here and he become a assistant coach here. You know, being a head coach is pretty huge for him, and that was the first thing. You know, he was just like excited. You know, thanking God and 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 you know when he came down there and talked to me, and you know we sat down, we had you know a conversation. You know, I got one more year, and you know we got to make this one year winning year for him and for me. What are you most excited about as far as what? stays the same and what possibly changes um you know like you know like he said um the way our style of play is basically going to stay the same you know the only thing that we're going to tweak a little bit is our you know our defense you know instead of switching everything probably going to down or you know you know down with the five guys so that maybe the five guy can stay around the pants and block some more shots and stuff so so i think you know i just think that's basically it. You know, the, the same coach dance system is probably going to be offensively. And like you said, like, you know, we're probably going to be calling a little bit more plays, but everything is basically going to be the same. Everything's going to be the same, but there will be some tweaks. I'm interested to see what those tweaks are going to be. We'll hear more from Coach Jackson on what this team identity is going to look like later on when it starts to be put together. But you heard from Obina and Achille Killen there. You heard from Nate Martin just a moment ago. The reason I bring those two up is because those are going to be the guys that are going to be leaned on a lot for leadership on this team. And Coach Jackson talked about these guys and the leadership that he's looking for and how they're going to be a big role in this upcoming season. Well, I met with Obina and Nate. Obviously, they're the leaders of our team. And said, fellas, we'll go as far as you guys will take us. Our job is to add talent around you to help you. Uh, hopefully, we had, like I said, we had a kid in last week. He's an older kid. Hopefully, we can add two or three of those older kids who's been in the, been in the battles, who understands, who's, who's mature. But obviously, guys here, it's, it's going to be Nate and Obina. Uh, it's going to be leading our basketball team. So those are the leaders, Coach Jackson, now the head coach of the Thundering Herd. We'll hear more from Coach Jackson. Again, this is stuff you didn't hear in the public remarks earlier today. So this is stuff that will be new to you when we get to it. We'll have more from him later on. But when we continue, we're going to take a slight diversion from basketball to what's happening overall at Marshall University. 
My guest will be Sydney Shelton. She's part of the marketing team at Marshall University. It's always good to catch up with her. She'll be with us when we continue on today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to this Wednesday, April 3rd edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We'll open up our text line again in just a moment, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Let's welcome to the program now. She is the Director of Marketing and Fan Engagement at Marshall University. She's also my friend, Sydney Shelton. How you been? How we doing? We're good. We, it's not every day we get to announce a new head coach. It's not every day. And it's not every day we get to see some people at Marshall who normally don't wear suits dressed up to the nines. Absolutely. We love a green jacket day. That's what we call them around here. We yeah. get to see Christian in his green jacket. And, you know, bringing in the new head coach is always a fun experience. And it's a moment that um, so many people will remember for the rest of their lives. Look, I don't want to put you on the spot, but who dropped the ball with Brad Smith not knowing it was green jacket day? Come on, who dropped the ball there? You know, Brad Smith gets to do whatever he wants, and if he doesn't want to wear a green jacket today, then he doesn't have to. That's a good response, Sydney. That's a good, that's an excellent response. You you weren't even expecting that. You swung and knocked that one right out of the park. That was good. Yeah, you know, it was uh, exciting to have everyone in the camp today and um, to have Brad and to Christian speak um, on Corny's accomplishments and the direction that we're going to take this men's basketball program. It was a great day. So basketball, of course, uh, a lot of excitement. New coach, always exciting to uh, welcome someone in. New to the family, even though they've been part of the family for a long time. So I'm sure that we'll uh, see real soon opportunities, ticket opportunities. It's never, it's, it's never done. It's always happening 24-7, 365. There are always ways for people to support the basketball program and with the new head coach. And I'm sure that uh, there'll be some opportunities out there soon for people maybe uh, want to get back on board or maybe that are excited and, and want to continue to be a part of Marshall basketball. So, um, you know, what's the best early way for folks to maybe get on board with Marshall basketball before we really get into the meat of what you've got in store for us? Yeah, absolutely. There's so many ways for fans to show their support. Um, one way that you can always show support for our student athletes and for our coaches and for Marshall Athletics as a whole is to donate. So, you know, head over to the big green um, tab on herdone.com and donate. You can donate to our annual fund that, you know, helps out all of our student athletes and coaches and, you know, making um, the world go round here in herd athletics. But you can also donate specifically to a sport, um, specifically in this case, donating to men's basketball, you know, to their championship fund. Every little bit counts. and. Um, no dollar amount goes un unthanked. You know, we appreciate everyone willing to uh, donate and put some money forward to helping our student athletes have a successful ex ex experience here. Um, and then an additional way is season tickets. So um, we aren't on sale for season tickets yet, but there is a form that's online. You can find it um, in the recent men's basketball releases to show your interest in purchasing season tickets and we'll add your name to a list and we'll have someone reach out here um, in our ticketing office to kind of get you on board, show you the details, talk about cost, all the things. And hopefully we will gain some new fans and some new people that are ready to um, experience all the hype around Herdman's basketball and around our new head coach, Courtney Jackson. Sydney Shelton's with us. She's the director of marketing and fan engagement at Marshall University. And uh, to help Sydney out, I'm suggesting everyone who's listening right now should just donate $30 in honor of Coach Jackson being the 30th head coach at Marshall University. Donate $30 to the championship fund. As she just said, any amount appreciated. So $30 to commemorate him being the new coach, the 30th head coach. Hopefully a lot of people will take me up on that. Sydney Shelton, my guest. So we've got basketball out of the way for just a little bit. We've got softball and baseball still going strong, and we've got a series coming up this weekend. The Thundering Herd taking on Texas State at the ballpark. We're getting into some nicer weather, Sydney, so it's going to be a great time to come out and watch baseball. 
Absolutely. Hoping for some sunshine this weekend as we face Texas State. We got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This week, Friday, the game is at 6 p.m. Saturday, the game is at 3 p.m. And Sunday, the game's at 1. You know, we're looking forward to having people back in the ballpark this weekend. Um, hoping for sunshine, as always. But, you know, this weekend, we have on deck. Um, we are celebrating and bringing awareness to autism. And so we've working with some local community um, outreach to bring awareness to that. And um, you'll see some things throughout our ballpark kind of bringing awareness to um, that cause. And on Saturday, we will be giving away some Marshall logoed cups. So make sure you get there early to snag one of those cups. Um, you know, I'm sporting one right now on my desk. It's got the inaugural season logo on it. So make sure you get there early so you can snag one of those. That's on Saturday. So just everybody be aware, you know, if you want to get one of those, Sydney not giving them out until Saturday. Not until Saturday. With baseball still going strong, of course, we got softball as well. Plenty of opportunities there to support the ladies on the diamond as well. Yeah, they're on the road this weekend, um, but you can follow along with them on ESPN, on Herd Zone, on our Twitter page, um, Herd Softball on Twitter, you know, follow along. There's lots of ways to support them from afar, and, you know, keeping up with them and their success so far this season is uh, something that we encourage all fans to do. And, of course, everything on HerdZone.com, you can get the latest schedules there, find out when the Herd will be back in action, but... Really, the big one is going to be baseball, of course, with the fun weekend and, and with basketball signing its guy, Cornelius Jackson. A good crowd today, and uh, a lot of things are happening positive as well. Um, just to, to look ahead a little bit, probably the next big event will be the spring game. Uh, how close are you to finalizing plans for what fans can expect? Yeah, you know, spring game is always like an exciting time. It's- We've been away for football for several months and to be back in the zone and back with, you know, that style of um, play, you know, bringing football back is just super exciting. And so um, we're looking forward to having everyone back in the zone for the spring game. Um, you can purchase your tickets online at herdzone.com. We've got tickets on sale ready for you to scoop up. Parking? What's the parking situation going to look like? You, uh, you got that settled yet? Yeah, parking. Um, the parking information is also on Herd Zone. So um, you can, over on Herd Zone, under the ticket tab, you can go over and then under football. It'll be spring game tickets and spring game parking. So the parking passes are available um, for one spot in the West Lot, $20, first come, first serve parking. So um, super excited to give you a chance to get in the West Lot do a little tailgating before we uh, play some football. Yeah, that's a big opportunity because a lot of fans maybe don't get that chance to get one of those parking spots because they're so in demand. So if you want to go tailgate in the West lot, you better go get your parking spot. You get your ticket now. And, of course, we'll have a good time during the spring game this year as uh, the Herd looking to unveil a more, I don't want to say high-octane offense, but – yeah, the word air raid has been thrown around, Sydney. You know it's going to be a really exciting brand of football this year. Absolutely. Super excited to um, see what football has been working on in their spring season and see what they're going to bring to the field for us this fall. My guest is the Director of Marketing and Fan Engagement at Marshall University, Sydney Shelton. And, of course, you can head over to HerdZone.com to take advantage of all the opportunities and, of course, uh, we got to talk about it. I haven't had a chance to just yet, so I'll give you a chance because I know you're a big fan of Kim Caldwell. She was named the 2024 Spaulding Maggie Dixon NCAA Division I Rookie Coach of the Year. And women's basketball has been a hot ticket all season long, and I'm sure it's going to get a lot hotter for you. You know, it's uh, super exciting to see what Coach was able to come in and do not only in her first year with Marshall, but her first year as a Division One head coach. I think, you know, we've been through so many highs this season that some people forget that. 
So, you know, this is her first year as a Division One head coach and her leadership and how she has mentored the team and pulled together the staff that she has, you know, it's a big accomplishment for her and it's a big accomplishment for our school. And, you know, we're just super proud of her and super excited to see what's to come. How hot has that ticket been ever since we got close to the end winning the championship? I know there's, I'm sure, a lot of people who are jumping on board that maybe weren't with you earlier on. Yeah, just how incredible has that been so far as far as ticket sales, engagement with fans? It's been something to behold, and women's basketball has really enjoyed, I don't want to say a a boost, but it's been more than just Caitlin Clark as of late. People are more interested in women's basketball now more than ever in a time that I can remember. Absolutely. You know, there was a, a press conference that Kim talked about um, prior to facing Virginia Tech where she talked about um, how important women's basketball is and how on the rise women's basketball is and how important it is to, you know, give to women's sports and to watch women's sports and to, to support women's sports. And so to see how she's able to, how she has been able to come in and transform um, this program and bring in new fans is surely spectacular to see but just because the season's over doesn't mean that women's basketball at Marshall's over you know we've got um the jersey sale that is happening right now so you can bid on one of the white jerseys that was worn in the championship conference game and so you can head over to our website or social media to claim or try to claim one of those you know that'll be a big fundraiser for them and we're super excited for people that are bidding on those for a chance to, you know, hold a piece of history. But also, you know, if you were a single t- uh, single game ticket holder this year, we encourage you to become a season ticket holder. You know, any way that you give back to our teams and to our, um, our athletic department help, and that's one way that you can support them by purchasing season tickets. So hopping on um, an interest form that should be in the latest women's basketball releases just, Filling that out, we'll have someone contact you. That's just a way that you can continue to support them even through this offseason. My guest is Sydney Shelton, Director of Marketing and Fan Engagement at Marshall University. Good talking to you today, Sydney. It's, uh, it's been fun. I, get to, I got to see you earlier, and now I'm talking to you, and uh, it's been a good day for Marshall Sports so far. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sid. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. That's Sydney Shelton. She does a fantastic job as your marketing and fan engagement director at Marshall University. We'll hear more from the new head coach, Cornelius Jackson, when we continue on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. It's our final segment for today's edition of The Drive. It's ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Our text line is open. It's 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Earlier today, the formal introduction of Cornelius Jackson as the next head coach at Marshall University. He's the 30th head coach. I did not realize we had got to that number. So number 30 belongs to Cornelius Jackson, and hopefully he'll have a long tenure as the head coach, an opportunity he's been waiting for since he was 19 in Towers. He was sitting in Towers East, he said, wanting to be the head coach of the Thundering Herd. So now that opportunity is his and his dream is coming true. And he's got a big opportunity in front of him because Marshall has a chance to be successful quickly. And that comes from the transfer portal and also trying to develop the roster. First up, Coach talked to the media after the formal presser, and one of the questions was about managing the roster, and so he talked a little bit more about that with us. It is, it is, it's 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 different, you know. I some people complain and and fuss about it. I mean, if you're going to be a coach, that's the times you're in. You have to make adjustments. You have to always stay on on your job, working watching the portal watching uh to see who's leaving and see who's coming is also uh, managing your roster so it's a it's a job but again if you're if you're going to be in coaching you have to tackle it yeah he has to tackle it and he was asked as far as what are some of the needs of this team i'll give you a hint 
I think you know what it is. It's guards. Guards. I think we need guards. You know, we have Obina and, and, and Nate, obviously, at the helm holding down the middle. We have five scholarships, so we'll look to fill those. Uh, at least three guards, and then we have a little room to play with the other ones. We may bring in a, a four or five uh, kind of skill guy, but definitely guards. There you have it. Bring in some guards. we got five scholarships. Got to bring some guards into the team. And that comes down to, of course, working the transfer portal. Is it going to be more of a mix trying to manage the portal? Is it going to be trying to bring in players and developing them? He gave us a little bit more insight on what that's going to look like as he's now the head coach. Yes, we we, we, we've, we signed two high school kids early. We signed a 6'11 kid out of Charlotte, and we signed a 6'5 kid out of a high school kid. Both of these guys are high school kids uh, out of Georgia. So they, I've talked to them. They're both excited. Again, they'll come in and the, may the best man win. But, you know, we, we're going to recruit. We're looking <laughs> everywhere for transfer portals, high schools, uh, even junior college. And we'll find the right fit, again, for Marshall and put a good product on the floor. That was something that was big today, Just the right fit for Marshall University. There's a lot of talent out there that was brought up, but looking for the right fit for Marshall University. And that also goes toward the staff. Will there be any staff changes? What's the makeup of his team going to look like as far as the assistant coaches are concerned? He touched on that a little bit, and he alluded to the fact that when you're an assistant coach, yeah, there's there's a certain level of, of interest in a program. And then when you're the head coach, there's always a lot more interest as far as people ringing your number. He's got a lot of texts today, a lot of phone calls today from people, not just Greg White. Others have been calling him as well. You know what? I was – It's a, in, in coaching, it's a uh, – shouldn't say it's a rule, but it's a thing. Whenever there's cha- change in the staff – as an assistant coach, you get 10 calls. I found out last week as a head coach, <laughs> you get 100 calls. So it's a lot of moving parts in terms of our staff. Uh, what I can guarantee you is we'll have a, a good staff in here who's hardworking, who's dedicated, and uh, who has one goal in mind, and that's making Marshall University a winner. So no details really just yet, but that's sort of the outline of the philosophy here. He's not going to just outline it completely and tell me what it's going to be like. Same thing as far as what this team identity is going to look like. Now, and the public presser, I, I want to know, you know what's going to be different about this team. You know, we've talked about what's going to be the same, and it's going to be similar to what Dan D'Antoni runs. It's going to be similar to that up-tempo pace. So there's going to be familiarity. They're not reinventing the wheel at Marshall University, but you know, I was curious what's going to be different, and I wanted to press him a little bit more. So when I get a chance to ask him about it, it was – more focused on what's this team identity going to be like? You know, you're the head coach now. Dan D'Antoni's not. So as the head coach, what does this team look like under your stewardship? Well, it, it kind of depends. I mean, obviously we want to play up-tempo. That, that up-tempo can look a lot of different ways. Um, again, like I told you earlier, Paul, like the way coach play, I, I, I believe in that. Um, but it kind of it's kind of up to the players that we get here. You know, I, I'm – I'm adapt- adaptive or can, can, can make changes. Um, we'll have more sets, like I said, in spe- special situation sets. But I want to bring guys in here who understand how to play hard, play smart, and play together. So without basically opening up the playbook for me and saying, look, okay, here's what we're going to run specifically here. You know, here's all the details. You know, kind of a hint of what it's going to be. This team will be more defensive-minded, I'm sure of that. There's going to be more, I don't want to say it's going to be more of a free-flow offense or it's going to be less of a free-flowing offense, but I think there will be opportunities to adapt. I think there will be opportunities to adjust. I don't think he's going to sit back and just let the flow of the game go and hope for the best. And I'm not implying that that was Dan D'Antoni as well, but Dan would give the players the opportunity to go out there and create. I think that's still going to happen. But I think that you're going to have a coach that's going to be able to look at the situation and go, okay, we need to adjust now. We need to do this now. We need to focus here. We need to do a little bit better in this manner. 
I think you're going to see that. And, of course, here again is a coach that I think is going to be more able to use the transfer portal. And I don't think this is an age thing. I just think it's you have younger coaches that are more ready. Is that even fair to say more ready? I would think you have coaches that are coming up now and they're understanding the situation better. It's not ingrained in them to a point where, you know, that's the system they've always used. You know, we bring players in, we develop them, we we get them ready. They earn their way onto the lineup, the roster. They they play and, you know, I'll bring them up slowly but surely. We'll develop them. And I think that's got to change a little bit because it's not a win-now mentality, but it kind of is. With the transfer portal, every year is an opportunity, and it's win-now. There's no, okay, we're building for tomorrow. You, you build a foundation, but there's no more, okay, we're going to have a really good team here in a two, three years. It's you better have a really good team now. You better have a really good team next year. You better, better have a really good team the year after because players are going to come, players are going to go. The transfer portal giveth it, taketh away. And we've seen a lot of players who have left the team, and we're seeing now an opportunity to bring players in with a new coach who's going to run a similar style. But at the same time, I'm sure that there's going to be more than what they're saying right now as far as what's going to be different, what this team's going to look like. And I'm hopeful that this team truly is going to be a reflection of Cornelius Jackson. He gets the opportunity, and I think he will. He gets the opportunity to go out there, coach the team to the best of his ability in a way that is reflective of him and what he's trying to achieve. And we see a Marshall team that is competitive. Now, I'm not ready to go, okay, it's got to reach certain benchmarks here, year one, year two. I'm not ready to do that yet. It's day one for him officially, his the head coach. But I think there's going to be a lot of pressure early. There's going to be a lot of pressure, period, to have a better result than last year, to have a better outcome than last year when he takes the court for the first time as the head coach. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate every one of you being with me here today on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We've got Pirates baseball tomorrow, and then we'll be back on the air with you Friday. Hopefully, weather permitting, we'll be on the air at the ballpark. Take it on Texas State. The Thundering Herd will be at Jack Cook Field, and we'll bring you the show live from the field. If there's not going to be a Marshall game on Friday due to weather, we'll have Pirates baseball. So, I hope that I'm back with you on Friday because that means we've got baseball coming to you from Jack Cook Field. Thanks again to my guest, Sydney Shelton. She's the director of fan engagement marketing at Marshall University. Also, I want to thank Cornelius Jackson, Nate Martin, Obina, and the Chili Killen. That's going to do it for today's edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Retransmitting in Glorious FM on 94.1 W227BS Huntington. This is 930 WRVC Huntington, celebrating 100 years of broadcasting.